Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, and this is day three of 30 days to 2500 bucks. This is an action based webinar boot camp series. It's going to be different from anything you've ever done before, and it is there's some stuff that's coming that's going to blow your mind. So, with that, we're going to get into it. If you have a question, just go ahead and put it in the box. And once we're, I'm done with the presentation, then I will answer the questions and then we'll go forward. And remember, every day for the next, today is day three, so it's 27 more days after this that we will be making this happen. So with that, booyah. Now this is going to be somewhat kind of hokey. It's going to be a little weird. Uh, some of you are going to be like, what? If you grew up like I did and they changed things in schools. I used to have to say the Pledge of Allegiance every day to the flag. Went from being first grade to the sixth, and then I think they changed that. But I need you to make this pledge. I need you to own it. I need you to feel it. I need for you to actually believe. Because it's not really about me. It's about you. Because if you don't believe, then you're wasting your time by being here. So here we go from the top. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I all in. That's right. I all in. Now, I actually did that on purpose. So, know that. Feel that. You've got to believe. All right. Now, this is uh, this was the task for yesterday. You know, I got some emails and people were talking. And it's like, how many people did this? How many people went out and hugged a stranger? I know it's going to like, it's a little scary for some people that creeps them out. But the reality is, if you're going to run a business, you have to be able to go out and speak to people you don't know. That is a big part of it, because once you go through your friends list, once you go through everyone that you know, you'll be dealing with strangers. And for those of you who did it, and I know there was some that did it because I, I got emails last night. How'd you feel? I mean, when you do something new, there's going to be two reactions, one of fear and one of exhilaration. Hopefully for you, it was exhilaration because part of this course is to make you a better person, make you more confident and make you more money. So this is the deal. This is how it's going to go. And every day there's going to be stuff for you to do. And as this goes on, it's going to become more and more complex. And it's designed for a certain reason. And I will tell you why. When I started my sixth business, which was successful compared to the, other, the previous five, I had to go through a lot of stuff dealing with code enforcement, going down to Fulton County to get my business license. And this sweet lady, she goes to the map and sees that my... At the time, it was Mailbox, etc. Now it's UPS store that I was actually in a commercial zone and she granted me my business license, my first valid business license. And I started that business and I started actually making money with that business the first week. It wasn't months. It wasn't weeks. It wasn't. It was I made money the first week. And I remember as I take you through this course. That's the deal. I was making money before I got my business license. I learned a lot from doing that deal where I was with business environments and then I sold all that other furniture on consignment. What I didn't know, I had created a business. I was a reseller. I was a, cons I was a consigner that went to people and sold in their space. So business ideal, think about it. Think about how many people who don't want to deal with this stuff. I gave you a gym. That is the reason that business was successful because I was making money before I got my business cards, before I got um, my business license, before I rented that. I got that stuff because one day I met someone and he's like, oh, you have a business card? And I was like, uh, no. And I was thinking it was about five weeks in at that point, but I was making money. I was supporting myself. So definitely understand this these exercises and things they may seem silly but they're there for a reason and <laughs> they're going to increase all right it's day three it's time to be 
an action oriented person. One of the things, and I'm going to use an example of a person that I have seen in virtually every Facebook group, uh, subscribe to every reseller channel, just a constant presence for the last three years. I know some things about this person. They're not doing well financially. They're not making it. They actually had to move because things got so bad. And I looked at this person and the only action that they were putting out was the action of being in groups and asking a bunch of questions, but really doing nothing with the information. Three years in, I have people who've gone through some of my webinars and courses who've started businesses in six months and have better traction than this guy who was in three years. So what that is, is someone who's running away from doing the hard work of building a business, selling products, sourcing product, talking to people. This is the stuff that makes you money, not being in a group, not listening to other people, not I'm just researching. No, you're procrastinating. That's what that is. That's not research. That's procrastination. And you, you have to go out there and knock on doors, talk to people, call people, push your product. Because even if your product is flawed, and it may very well be, you're going to get feedback so much quicker. You can get more feedback in a, in a robust week of activity than you can in a quarter of, well, I'm trying to do this and I'm taking my time. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it. You could start a company that makes money to support you and your family in one day if you have the right idea. I've done it. So understand, this is about action. And as the we go forward, the action is going to increase. <sighs> Here we go. Uh, multiplication is fun if the money is the game. This is your first task for day three. This week, double all money making activity. Now, what does that mean? If you're on eBay and you're listing two or three items a day, you're going to now list eight. I'm going to give you a higher number. If you're on a Craig's listing and you're listing 10, 10 20 things a day, you're going to list 40. And if you're doing Amazon FBA and you're sending in like four boxes a week, you're going to send in eight. You have to really start pushing yourself to get better metrics. Because when you just start, you know, you really have no metrics. You're just like, here I am. I'm a guy. I'm a gal. I want to do this stuff. But mm, I don't really know what my numbers are because you haven't really done anything to get numbers. You can make assumptions or if you're coming from an industry or a business where you know the business well, you're going to be ahead of the average person. But for most people who are just starting from scratch, there are no numbers to be had. You have to develop them. And this is an exercise to help you develop those numbers. Because when you start pushing yourself, when you start doubling your, your what you're doing, you're going to start running into problems. <laughs> you're going to start running into roadblocks, which creates problems that you must solve and usually when you solve these problems there's uh, money at the end of the rainbow because essentially that's what we are if you're a hustler entrepreneur whatever you want to call yourself i'm fine with hustler you are a problem solver that's what you do someone doesn't have a certain kind of product you go out and you source it at a good price so you can flip it to them and make money you are a problem solver so task number one double all money making activity and start today start today figure out what you can do to increase your output now I kind of went a little bit into this but this is one of the most important things that you can do for your business you must know what your numbers are for whatever you're doing you have to know what your numbers are you cannot kind of sort of you can't be close if someone woke you up in the middle of the night and shook you and you were like, Arr! what are your numbers? 150 items a week. That's how well you need to know your numbers that someone can wake you from a sound sleep and you know what your numbers are. Because your numbers is what's going to make your business or kill your business. And there are many people, they don't know what their numbers are. If I went up to some person on Facebook who, who will remain nameless, and said, how many items do you have to sell in your business to make $10,000? And a lot of people I can walk up to and then be, huh? 
<laughs> and it won't be like, um, no, I'm not telling you that. Cause that's my, it won't be that response. Like, no, I know, but I'm not telling you. It'll be like, huh? I never thought of it. That is a killer of more businesses than you know. Not knowing the numbers. So you have to really start paying attention to this stuff. Like, give you an example. Uh, my consulting business. If I want to make, you know, I, I get paid four fifty an hour, and understand, five years ago that was thirty bucks an hour. You can increase your prices, and people will pay you, but you must increase your value. So, if I wanted to make four Gs a month, I need ten clients a month. Simple math. If I wanted to make twelve thousand a month, I need thirty. Simple math. Once again, those are my numbers for my consulting business. My consulting business is just one facet of many of the things I do. I usually talk to five, five or six people a month because I don't really push it. I don't even advertise it. People find me, and when I found when they find me, is just a much better deal. So with your numbers, you've got to really start pulling the veneer off of the wood and looking at the grain. You, you have to do this. So part of getting your numbers is what part of your business makes you the most profit? I want you to think about that. What, what, what is it? What makes you the most profit? And you should be like, bam, it's this. You know, I do eBay and I'm going to already tell you if you're a reseller, you know what makes you the most profit? Sourcing. That makes you the most profit sourcing, not listing, because you can go out and get 10,000 things. Right. But if they're the wrong things and list them all day, you just wasted a lot of time and money. Sourcing is your profit driving activity. If you're a reseller. Yeah, everyone, eBay, Amazon, FBA sourcing. That's that's where your money comes from. So if you know that's your profit center, Based on what I said, activity number one, you double what you do. So if you're sourcing um, two buys a week, you're going to source six. If you notice, I'm like actually tripling, and I'll, I will explain that in a minute. You have to really know where your money's coming from. Uh, I'll give you an example. Many of you knew I just recently did the blog Hustlers Food. For about 18 months, I didn't have a blog. Nope. No blog new website people are like you need a website you need a website my data said no I really didn't because I looked at what it takes to make money because I went through it and I was like okay because at one point I had a blog urban pack rat I was writing posts every day sometimes two or three a day just churning out content churning out content and then I would go make a YouTube video and get two or three book sales then I go back the next day I'm churning out content the blog was not <laughs> making me any money and when the shows came on the blog started to make me money because people would go search for storage auctions and since I had so much content they would go to the blog I mean I even had people from storage wars come in on the blog all kinds of stuff so at that point it started to make money well, when that show died down and people stopped looking for storage auctions, uh, the blog was just there. It was nice to have and everything, but it wasn't making any money. So one day I was wanted to put my efforts into writing. If you didn't know, I write in four different genres. I write romance. I write erotica. I have some crazy stuff I'm working on. So instead of putting my writing capital into a vessel that didn't make any money, I took that same writing capital and moved it somewhere else where it does make money. And I doubled what I was doing on YouTube. Because if, you, if you've been a long time subscriber, if you go back two years, each month I do anywhere from 15 to 40 videos on YouTube. And people are like, you know, you got all those views. It must be the volume. Just throwing up videos. And it's a plan because YouTube is an economy. It's an ecosystem. So... I finally have figured out a way to get pushed up into it. But the whole deal is when you know your numbers, when you know what makes you profit, you know where your revenues are coming from, you can make better decisions for your business. And the decision that I was able to make for my business was to get rid of the websites and the blogs and stuff. And I actually made more money. I actually doubled my income. 
by getting rid of profit draining activities. Because like I said, it, depending upon your business model, depending on what you do, a blog can be a wonderful internet asset. But if your goal is to make money, you need this, a place people can find you, a way for people to, a way to have your products hosted and a way for people to click a link to buy them. That's all you need to make money online. That's it. Well, actually you need marketing, you know, for folks to know where you are, but you don't need a website anymore. You, I've made sales strictly from YouTube. I've made sales strictly from Facebook. And you can also make mobile sales. So there's a lot that's going on. But for you, you got to hammer down. Where does your money come from? What is the most profitable activity that you do in your business that brings you money? Not what you like. Not what you think is fun. But what brings you the most money? All right. <laughs> On to phase two. Let's find out. I used to actually wear a lab coat and do stuff like that. I actually worked in a lab a long, long time ago. And what you do with analysis is you have a base. Like when you draw someone's blood. If you've ever been in a hospital or you're on the medication, a lot of times they'll draw your blood before they give you the medication to kind of get like a baseline of where you are with your body chemistry. So in the next five minutes, you have to figure out where does your money come from? What is your most profitable activity? What brings home the bacon? Because once you do this, what you can do is start to strip out the things that don't make you any money. Because they're not making you money. Because a lot of people will have things that are uh, nice to have. Like renting an office before you generate your first dollar is deadly. That's one I didn't make. But I know many people do. I know a girl, she rented an office and everything. She burned through 20 grand before she made any money. You know, people are like, well, it's tax deductible. It was just not a good way to go. So think about it, you know. And your five minutes started a minute ago. Just sit here and think, what exactly makes your money flow? Is it your sourcing? Do you make cakes? Do you walk dogs? If we go back to the cuddle lady from day one, she went out and handed out flyers and business cards. Her website, I checked this morning, is still isn't done. She's too busy making money to build a website. <laughs> I want you to think about that. <laughs> I want you to think about that. That was very, very salient information they gave you. So now you're at about the uh, two minute mark. And um, really, what is it? Now, for those of you who don't have a business, okay, it's going to be a little different because you're like, well, I don't even have the business, which kind of goes back to I was talking about the metrics so your thing is you got to get started and know that you will fail know that you will run into roadblocks and this is good stuff i know you're like well, well, what it's good stuff because when you run into the roadblock it forces you to think about okay why didn't this work out which gives you data which gives you numbers which gives you information to make better decisions going forward because understand this stuff is super, super critical to your business. Super, super critical. Super critical. Because once you flesh out where does most of your money come from, what are your most profitable activities, and then strip out the fat, you can double, triple, or quadruple your income. Yes, you can do that. Because... There are many people like, okay, give you my example. Uh, if you saw the video about internet marketer, there are days when I'm not doing the project, like, you know, I'm doing this, so I'm not working two hours a day. But when I got rid of the blog, when I got rid of, and I was just isolated, what made me money, I was able to strip out six to four hours out of my day. I didn't have to do that stuff. I was able to uh, go to the gym, middle of the day when there was nobody there. Ended up losing like 30 pounds. I got really, really strong. I mean, I can squat, what, 
like 500 pounds. I can deadlift 600 pounds. And I just really worked on a lot of core stuff and walked for an hour and a half. I freed up time for me to do things that made me healthy. See, well, you know, a lot of people don't understand what I'm talking about. You should be getting rich. I consider myself rich not so much because of money. I consider myself rich because I get to control my time. I get to control my time. Other than when I'm doing a project such as this, my time is mine to do whatever I want to. And with the tools of automation, I have, I have videos up on YouTube that may pop up in the morning, but I could have done them two or three weeks ago. So understand, with this creating a life of design and intent, the goal is to control your time. Because once you start to control your time, guess what? You're retired. When you control your time, you're retired. You don't have to go anywhere you don't want to go. You don't have to go to an office. You don't have to deal with... You're retired. So the sooner you get to that point, the better off you are. Because I want you to think about this. You get to that point and you're 60. You're 65. If Unless you've been working out, because I, I've seen people in my gym, you could be 65, you could be 70, you could be an awesome physical specimen shape. That's one of the reasons I started working out. You know, that's one of the reasons I lift the heavy weights and stuff because I have seen guys. There's a guy in one of my old gyms. He was 70. You would have swore he was 42. His wife was 38. I am not bullshitting you. Dude was 70 years old. Eyes clear, teeth white. Uh, he juiced. He did this stuff. And guess what? He owned a business. He did a very smart thing. Uh, he had four sons. He built this construction business, built it up, kept it going, brought them in. So he doesn't he runs it, but he doesn't have to be there because he's got them running it. And it's a family business. And the thing is, he controls his time. But he has a business in his 70s that still puts cash in his pocket. So understand, there's a lot of things that you can do. All right. So hopefully you have found out those things that were the most profitable activities of your business. <laughs> I love this bull. I I so love this bull. Think fast because uh, if you weren't here for the first few days, uh, there's a there's a goal that you'll see, and you're going to start your second business. Now, remember that list of ideals you did on day one two. Pick one and uh, design a private or service now. Ten minutes and. Uh, after the webinar, your goal is to go out and sell that to someone. I know you're going, wait, 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 wait. This sounds inefficient. This kind of sounds like a lot of stuff that you are, um, you actually say don't do. You just like focus on one thing at a time. What I'm doing is leading you down the path of discovery. Because what I learned when I started blogging, I had actually three blogs. And the one emerged to be the clear winner. So by starting these two, because the goal is to get you the four businesses. I know you're like, what? Yes, four businesses. By doing this, one of the four is going to be very distinct. It's going to be more natural. It may even surprise you. You might already know what it is. But by doing these four businesses, you're going to force yourself to be more accountable. You're going to be busy as hell. And the thing is, with each business, your goal is to make sales and get money every day. So I'm going to move to the next slide, but you still have about eight minutes. <laughs> I love this. You know, I used to wonder why my teachers in school would just like get happy when there was a test because it was like they set us up, right? When I'm setting you up for success, I want you to be successful and I want you to work hard and I want you to do this because I can say this without a shadow of a doubt, going back to Karen, the gold star winner of day one. If you follow this stuff and you actually do this stuff, you will be successful. If you do the work, you will yield positive results. If you go, I don't know about that, Glendon. Sir Glenn, I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm a little too uncomfortable. I think I'm going to pass on that one. Mm -mm. You're going to miss the lesson. You're going to miss the lesson. And then as we get further down, you're going to be like, whoa, I wish I had did that. Because, you know, each all this stuff is designed to build you up, to totally build you up. And I'm going to give you some serious, serious ideals later on down the road. So it, 
pays to do this stuff. And another thing, as I said in the opening, I want you to become a better person. I want you to become more confident and also to make more money. Now, to, uh, you know, you're at the like six minute mark. How do I run two businesses? Manage your time wisely, set goals, use the same infrastructure hub. Now, what, now there's a reason I had two warehouses, and I, I will actually you know, tell people that. Now, I used to have a brand new furniture website, lost my ass on it. And what we did was create new businesses that used the same trucks, used the same personnel, used the same warehouse. So you can have, like, uh, I will talk about Eddie, who should be here today. If he's not, uh, he has a pressure washing business and he wants to do barbecue. He can easily do both. It's about structure. It is 100% about structure. It's about setting goals. Like, okay, if I'm going to do the pressure washing thing during the day. On the weekends, I'm going to go hard with the hog. You can do both. If you're doing pressure washing, I don't know how he does it. He already has a truck, so it's nothing to get that truck and hook up the barbecue trailer. If you spin your businesses from the same hub, and this is one of the reasons, and there's going to be a special webinar I'm going to do just how to get a warehouse. You have one warehouse. You can run two, three, four, five different businesses on that one warehouse. Use the same staff. Use the same trucks. Use the same space. And it gives you more variety, and it's diversified income. So it's something I'm going to teach you how to do. So you should be at like uh, the two-minute mark. So one of those things that you wrote down, today take it and go out there and sell it make it and the thing is you can you know as discussed in previous webinars you can do pre-sales so even if the product takes some time to get ready you can still sell it as you know this is a test and this is only a test uh monkey wearing ninja suits are not coming to get you well not yet I want you to really have fun with this. Do not uh, obsess. Do not go crazy. Don't stress yourself out because the things that I'm having you do, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. You're going to have issues. You're going to have um, situations. But I've learned more from failure than success. So at this point, we're, I'm going to roll this over because like I said uh, the goal is to keep these at 30 to 40 minutes since there's one every day <clears throat> so with that let's go to <laughs> the questions uh, this is this this is you know like I said there's gonna be a few so I'm gonna go through it funny story how I found out about you I was searching on YouTube back in the summer of 2012 trying to find an easy way to clean out the fan of my Toshiba laptop that is one that's like my fourth most view video that Toshiba thing because I got frustrated and that actually is the reason I went from uh, Windows based machines to uh, Max because I was just killing it but that kind of is a good point about doing different things that is really interesting because I still get emails from that video every day no 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 if you do that you're gonna kill a fan I clean that sucker out four times it's still fired up and I ended up selling it, and I didn't hear anything from the person, so apparently it still worked. Edward Harvard. I went up to two strangers this morning, and I had a good time. They only gave me a fist bump, but their reaction was priceless. I'll be back at it again. <laughs> when you do something like that, it does tend to weird people out. Oh, you was about to say record. I, I wasn't going to forget. I wasn't. Trust me. Uh, this is from Tracy. Hey, Glendon. Greetings from sunny Palm Springs. 80 degrees today. Hugged a Craigslist potential buyer yesterday, even though she did not buy my beautiful Chase. She was a bit startled. <laughs> I'm loving this. I am loving this. Uh, Richard, I was hugless. I know. Keep keep at it. I did not even attempt <laughs> to hug a stranger. <laughs> you people in New York, New Jersey. In New Jersey... No stranger is going to hug you unless you're paying them or they're robbing you. Damn. What's up, Jimmy D? Uh, Corey Brown. I got a hug, went to the corner store, explained what I was doing, and got the hug. The clerk was in disbelief, but I was able to get the hug. Well done. Well done. I love this. 
Okay, Gandalf, I talk to strangers all the time. I'm good with that part. Let's see. Uh, this is from Josh. Josh, what is the largest and heaviest items you will sell on eBay? I've sold cars. <laughs> That's pretty heavy. I sold furniture, bedroom sets, fur uh, living room sets. When all right, let's talk about this real quick. Don't be intimidated by heavy. Um, once you learn how to ship that stuff, it's not that bad. If you're going to ship furniture, you have to crate it. If you're going to do a car, there's services that will transport the car for like. 400 bucks 350 across the country so go heavy man if you got it sell it how can we post 40 ads a day on craigslist without getting ghosted thank you from qq uh simple you have five craigslist accounts how can you sell to people when when you're new in the region of the country i don't know anyone in camp in california uh hopefully i'm not screwing up your name monia uh that is buckus what you do, and actually, you're actually in a really good position with that. Since you're new, everybody's a potential customer. So you can't like, hey, I'm friends with you. No, you just walk up. Um, depends on what you're selling, but you just like introduce yourself. Hey, I'm M. Jackson, and this is what I have to sell. And validate your product. Richard, sorry, the guy is 20 odd deals. I'm not gonna read that. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna help other people with their stuff. Well done, man. Well done. You are a true hustler. What about items that are art? This is from Dwayne. What about items that are artistic in nature? I can sell my art, and that's my first choice for a second job. But art buyers tend to be envy buyers. So and so has this. So I should get one too. Um. Art is very subjective, and my thing with art, when I got it out of units, I always priced it sky high and hung it on the walls. So you've got to kind of create your own following, because a lot of artists get caught up in, I make my art, I'm not a business person, that there's nobility and poverty stuff. No, that that is crazy. Um, essentially, you've got to own your art and ask the price that you want to ask for your art. Understand, I was an art student for four years, and I've seen crazy prices for stuff that is butt ugly to me. Just, you know, come up with a price, and, you know, just start off, I don't know what you're selling, but start off at 20 bucks, and if that sells, then go to 30, then 40. Uh, you've just got to figure out a way to promote yourself more so than anything. Oh, Reginald. This is crazy. I found the G-verse from the same video. That would be the uh, cleaning the laptop. Uh, Edwin James in London. It is dangerous to try to hug people. Yeah, Brits can be a little different, but you know, just explain the situation and find someone. I'm quite sure you can find someone. And I'll just go ahead and give you some hints on that. It would be a lot easier if it's the opposite sex. It would be a lot easier. Dwayne, no hug from the insurance man, but I did chat with him and ask him about his business methods. <laughs> hey, Glendon, I'm a writer and I'm compiling a group of ebooks on different topics. I'm not thrilled about Amazon. What do you recommend the best way to market my books? Uh, YouTube and get yourself a Gumroad account. Uh, none of my new stuff's on Amazon for a reason. I understand now. I have other stuff and other genres that's on Amazon because it works. And that stuff has like low price points. But if you're going to sell an expensive book on Amazon, you're going to get bent over. This is Monia. I got a hug from a businessman. He understood the exercise per perfectly. Has to. You got it. If you're a business person. April, the hug was easy to get. The guy behind the counter of the store was very well at sea. <laughs> I bet. Uh, this is from Chris. I'm starting a YouTube channel to promote my eBay sales pending ebook. Primarily focus on how to repair setup and repair uh, how to repair setup and repair guitars. Would be branching out to other subject matters like car repair or tour reviews that have a negative impact. Or okay, let me slow down. Okay, I think I get what you're saying. This is what I can give you some insight on that. If you're going to do the channel for uh, guitar repairs and stuff, only focus on the guitars. 
do not you know if you want to do the other stuff do a new channel every time that I do a pivot I lost people when people come to your channel they kind of expect a certain thing and when they don't get it they'll leave uh, this is Kevin Witherspoon how can you gain trust in potential customers depends on the item depends on the price point low price point items very simple like if it's some that like it's only 10 bucks that's no problem gaining trust is if you're selling more expensive stuff like one of the reasons I was able to sell used bedroom sets for fifteen hundred two thousand dollars was I had a warehouse I have people in there and I had previous customers it kind of really depends on what you're selling because that's a real broad question because you know just hit me up with what you're selling and I can nail it down a little bit more for you <laughs> the way no I would not cut my ear off uh, yeah uh, selling by is human by Daniel Pink is awesome I started reading it last night what else I would say read everything that Daniel Pink has written in the last five years I have and it's, it's awesome stuff Uh, Dwayne DeLong, I wish I was a writer as Gumroad does seem like a great deal. Okay, uh, Dwayne, you know you can put your art up on Gumroad and sell it. You know that, right? And you could become a writer if you want to. This is from Isaiah. What tips would you give to build up traffic on eBay and Amazon stores? Um, actually, the answer I'm about to give you, you're not going to like. I would not do it. I would not drive any traffic to eBay or Amazon because whenever you drive traffic to eBay or Amazon they're gonna present other offers so say you have a pink sweater and your pink sweater is 30 bucks then someone else has that same pink sweater and it's $22 guess who's gonna get the purchase what you should do is have a parallel website with all your products on it and drive traffic strictly to your website where you can control it, where you can get the metrics, where you know who's coming to your website and who doesn't, and you could collect email addresses. I would not drive a damn thing to eBay or Amazon. Uh, St Steve Ever. I know Flossie. There's a dude named Flossie Carter who makes bank on YouTube doing technical videos. You should tr you should create another account and try it. Let me tell let me uh, <clears throat> answer that a little differently. I know Flossie, you know, because he does phones, cases, you know, this is a buy, it's a solid bill. He has a certain personality that makes that thing shine. I love tech, but I don't love it enough to do another channel. My big love is, believe it or not, is art. Uh, writing, I've read like 4,000 books between, you know, first grade and now. So that's more my rim. And the reason that works so well for Flossie is that's who he is. That's who he is. He loves phones. The dude has three and four phones on, and he gets this other stuff. But he's also, and I want you to know something else. I've watched Flossie for years. He didn't have the following he has now in the beginning. One thing with YouTube channels, and I want all of you to hear me, is when you start a YouTube channel, stay with it. Uh, there's this chick. You could check her out. Her name is Andrea's Choice. I found her when I first started on YouTube in 2009. She had about 5 million views at that point. I looked yesterday, she had 110 million. She stuck with it. So whatever you start off with, you know, just stick with your channel and just hammer and hammer and hammer. Because when you get on a certain subject matter and you stay with it, this is what happens. Um, early this time last year there was a bunch of fools on YouTube talking smack about me and other people most of them are gone so if you stay consistent with your channel even if you have competition a lot of people are just gonna fall to the wayside so and also just be true to you if you like woodworking do a channel on woodworking if you like guns do a channel on, wood, on, on guns so you kinda gotta stick to what's really good for you because I couldn't do a flossy car I mean he kills it he kills it I mean I watch his channel just based on the smack talking that he does. Uh, Dwayne says, trust is easy. Be honest, show up early, leave late, do what you have to say, and find someone else to do the job if you can't do it. That's a good point. Oh, <laughs> Kevin's in the tax industry. If you're doing uh, that, that one, I have a friend who owns a CPA firm, and they do taxes. 
this would be their 14th year. The first year it was okay, they're killing it now. You just got to be consistent if you're going to do that business. You just got to stick with it. Let's see, Michael Valden. When are you going to put Making Money A to Z with Self Storage Unit Auctions 2011, the Silver Edition in ebook format? It actually came out in ebook format, and you can get it on uh, Gumroad because uh, I've got it mirrored up with the Journey to Storage Auction Success. Uh, Gumroad, Gumroad is the platform I use to for everything now. Uh, Ross the boss. Hey Glendon, what do you think about resellers who tell you what they pay for items and what they sold for? Very interesting question. That kind of ties into what I just said. There are a lot of people that came on YouTube and they wanted attention, so they pretty much gave away a lot of really good information, and a lot of those guys got hurt. I'm not going to get into a value of good or bad. I'm going to get into pretty much what I was talking about with Flossie Carter. Why are you on YouTube? I, just me, if I'm selling something and I've went on YouTube, I wouldn't tell you what I got and I wouldn't tell you how much I sold it for. A lot of those people, in my opinion, want to do exactly what I'm doing and they're just getting around to it because when I was in the storage auction business, I didn't have time for YouTube. I wouldn't have had time. Nor was, I mean, we were so secretive about what we do. We straight up lied. It's like, yeah, we got an estate clean out, which was kind of sort of the truth. Because if everyone knew that that um, bedroom set they were buying for 500 bucks, I got to have a unit for $30, they would, they would do what I call customer math. It's like, well, you only paid 30 so maybe 10 I mean, and they'd be real about it. They'd be like, yeah, no. Uh, I think they're doing them. Uh, let me say this. I think they haven't fully thought about their game plan because what's your end goal like when i came on youtube i was very unvarnished i'm selling this book so it, it it gets real interesting this is from alicia so what about itsy would you have also have your own website to drive traffic to itsy's a little different it's a little different because you can build your own products i would still in every case have my own all right this is what i do just to answer that question this is what i do any marketing that i do it goes for me like i do all this stuff on youtube but there's not a lot of people on youtube doing what i'm doing there's very few people on youtube are using youtube as an active selling channel they use it as a marketing channel they use it as a announcement channel but actually direct sales for there's not a lot of people doing it so i don't feel like directing my efforts there has a problem what you should do in my opinion if you have a product or service and you're going to pay money for marketing or you're going to put a lot of effort into marketing their marketing should point to something that you control you can't control itsy you can't control ebay and you can't control amazon and when i had a lot of books on amazon and i actually had a link under each video people would go to amazon and i knew the traffic was a lot but they would go in and see other less expensive products and buy that so I was really pimping myself out to my competition. Uh, this is from Isaiah. What would you advise for SEO outsourcing? Would you invest in it heavily for your booming e-commerce store? This is what I would do for that. I would find a way to do it and I would start off very, very, very small. I would not um, invest heavily in the beginning because when you're doing pay for click advertising or you're doing SEO stuff it's a lot of experimentation so I wouldn't spend a lot of money until I've hammered out my game plan and know what's working and what's not oh uh, is there a link for Gumroad <laughs> it's Gumroad G-U-M-R-O-A-D it's Gumroad uh, just put in what are you looking for exactly this is from Edwin Glendon, what was uh, that guy's channel that records CNN News with his H. Timmering gets paid? He, is he still doing that? I, I don't know. and I don't even know how he's getting away with that. Because I know there's a lot of people that do stuff and they have ads on their channel. I don't know. I, that one is actually 100% illegal. So I don't even know how they're getting away with it. 
Unless they have express permission from CNN. I don't know. Uh, let's see. This is Tasha Page. About how much is a warehouse in my other job? Whoa, whoa. I think this question is missing something. How much is a warehouse in my other job could be a nonprofit? Maybe a nonprofit can pay for the warehouse. By the way, I think you're amazing. Oh, thanks. Um, warehouse, that is highly subjective because it depends on where you are. Like if you're in a small town, your warehouse could be like 300 bucks a month. And the same warehouse here in Atlanta could be 5000 So to do your warehouse, you've got to kind of go out and look, do some comparables, ask a lot, some questions, do a little bit of uh, research. And the nonprofit thing, I don't really know a lot about that. My partner did nonprofits. I am clueless on the nonprofit deal. Uh, this is from Dina. How can I get my stuff into Amazon inventory without having to contact each and every manufacturer for UPS manufacturer record required by Amazon for my items that are not already in Amazon's? Tried their various options and got nowhere. You can't. Uh, you can make stuff. I mean, <clears throat> there may be some FBA black hat stuff, but once again, I don't know the answer to that. And this is the problem with Amazon. When you start mucking with Amazon stuff and they catch you, they ban you for life. I would say join Scam Power or uh, Scanner Monkey. They both have groups on Facebook and put that question in there. Um, Dwayne. SEO personal experience. My Jeep website often outranks uh, Diamond Chrysler's Jeep website and Google results. Just provide good content and you don't need to spend dollars on ads. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, how would you compare Gumroad to Ribbon? Jelani. I actually started with Ribbon first and Gumroad was much more robust. Easier to use, less issues because Ribbon, uh, they put the product out before it was done and it showed. All right, this is from Richard. Who would you recommend to build and maintain websites? Uh, broad question. It really depends on what you want. If you just want a website for online presence, you can do it yourself. If you're selling it, uh, you've got Spotify. It really, it really depends on what your purpose is. That's the question. What are you trying to do? If it's going to be a robust website, because the thing is, if your website isn't getting a lot of traffic, you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. Most of your money is going to be into handling a lot of traffic. Like if uh, your website starts getting 100,000 hits a month, you may have to go over to um, a designated server versus being on a shared server. Uh, this is from Chris. Do you have any cheap YouTube camera recommendations or cheap lighting tips you use when starting out? Uh, I can actually answer that real quick. Use your iPhone, go on to Amazon, and buy two balloon lights. They're like 60 bucks. Between those lights and your iPhone, your videos will look amazing. How's that for cheap? Uh, don't have a lot of experience with Android phones. Don't use them. But I know iPhones are amazing for YouTube videos. That's funny. Gumroad. No problem. Let's see, this is from Jimmy. Can people on YouTube make accents money off other people's videos? I see people's uploading Super Bowl ads and Olympic videos with ads running. That's illegal. If you don't own the content, you're not supposed to upload it, and at some point, YouTube will catch you. And it gets a little confusing because some content owners will allow other people to load their stuff up, but the AdSense revenue goes to them. So you're seeing this song or you're seeing this video and you're like, how in the hell did you put it up there and there's an ad running? You don't really know what they did with, you don't know how, what, how the content um, owner did it because it's common with songs. Some songs you can load up and there'll be an ad on it, but you're not going to get any money. The song owner will get the money. Uh, sure thing. Uh, let's see, Glenn, this is from Aaron. If a channel is getting a thousand views a day, is it better to have it monetized videos or to be partnered? Thanks. If you're only getting a thousand views a day, don't even put ads up. You're not going to make any money. This is from Michael. I'm going to be starting my own IT consultant firm, but I also have other skills that we use for consulting or not relaying it to IT. Should I create another consulting company or is there a way to integrate them? 
Uh, my question to you is whether those other skills, if those other skills are comparable to IT, yes. If they're like completely opposite, then you need to do two companies because you'll be the IT guy making donuts and people look at you crazy. It's like, is he going to come fix my computer or is he going to serve me a muffin? Uh, Fiverr's awesome. Fiverr's awesome. Like now from what regard? Making money or using it to get stuff done? Um, in the beginning, Fiverr was great for making money. I would just use it just me personally, we use it to get stuff done now. This is Corey. I just started an impression, just started as an impressions of Dr. King. Looking to get started, what do you recommend? I look for customers who want me to reenact to have a dream speech. Wow. Okay. What you're going to have to do is do a lot of free work and hopefully get put on like a, you know, your local television show or something where people will know who you are and then start to book you. If you remember the guy, Alpha Cat, who was doing the Obama pre impressions, he did that for a while before people started booking him, and then he started making money. Yeah, anytime you're doing something like that, you have to give a lot of that away for free. <laughs> Nursing homes. Uh, this is from Jeremy Jordan. Can you explain a little about your warehouse infrastructure to run the business just from the warehouse? Oh, that's simple. Make sure you have IT your IT stuff in there, your computers. And essentially, we brought stuff to the warehouse. We processed it in the warehouse. We shipped it out of the warehouse. We listed it in the warehouse. The stuff didn't go anywhere else. Um, I don't know if that answered your question, but that's, that's how the question came to me. Uh, Jimmy D, how accurate is Social Blade for YouTube revenue estimates? Extremely. It's just you don't know which variable because they're going to give you the low end and they're going to give you the high end. Uh, for me, it's pretty accurate. Uh, Dwayne, website templates are cheap and easy ways to set up. I taught myself how to code from a bunch of books. My site is clunky and bunky, but the info is there for folks who are looking for what I have to offer. I also have a contact form to help visitors fix their Jeep like a help desk. Google Ads has paid my hosting fees and tossed a few dollars my way every month for years with almost zero in upkeep. Pretty good. This is Greg. I met a lot of real business people on Fiverr that I now deal with outside of the site. The beauty of the site is that you never know who you run into on the other end. True, because I had a friend. She did something similar and ended up getting uh, like a $4,000 ghostwriting deal. Okay, it is $4.53. So we're almost bumping up the hour, so I'm going to shut this puppy down. And, you know, just for those of you who want the recorded sessions, because they're only going to people in the Hustler University, this is the deal. Uh, I'm not going to send this out until like Thursday or Friday again, because the only email I want to send out are the ones to the webinars. But this week, it's $199 for lifetime access. And if you want to do the monthly pan, it's $29.95. I think that was on the email I sent out this morning. So that's that. Oh, there's more questions. Whoa, it took a minute for it to load. Thanks, thanks. Okay. Uh, how could you run a resale business using a storage unit as your warehouse? Since we're bumping up, because like I said, I'm over actually over limit. Uh, I actually have that information <laughs> in in the uh, in the book. You know what? Uh, since someone's asked about it, I'll just send that out as an email. All right, so tomorrow I'll be here again, 4 p.m., uh, be early, and uh, thank everyone that came out, and y'all have a great evening. The organizer has ended the session, and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.